welcome back. I'm Pauline Grossman and I'm the Southern Duchess. And I'm really excited because right now I'm tackling my Thanksgiving 2021 feast with you. Um, a lot of people have sent in comments and they've actually asked me questions on some things that they'd like for me to show you. So um, today we're actually going to work on my homemade mashed potato recipe. I get this question from friends and family all the time. They're like, how do you make them? We're going to throw away the boxed potatoes. This is by far one of the easiest and simplest things that you could learn how to do. We're not going to be intimidated by this dish at all. Um, as you know, I have a big crew coming. I have 20 people, about 20 people coming to my house for Thanksgiving. And we do second Thanksgiving. So we do Thanksgiving on Thursday, three meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And then we do second Thanksgiving on Friday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I got to have enough for that many people for two nights. So I have a 15 pound bag of potatoes I've been working my way through. Um, these are russet potatoes. This is the potato that I prefer to use when I am doing a standard mashed potato. But this recipe works for turnips, sweet potatoes, red potatoes with skin on. I prefer my uh, red potatoes with the skin on. All the same. And that's one thing that I love about this base, this recipe, the base of this recipe, is that it works for everything. And um, it's just one to keep in your back pocket and it's really fast also. All right, so as you know, if you really know me and some of you do, you know how lazy I am. I am not pulling a peeler out to peel that many potatoes. Honestly, I'm not gonna pull the peeler out very often. Um, I will use it when I have to, but, but what I'm gonna do is just, what I did rather is I lopped off the end of the potato. This is so easy to do. Don't get out that peeler. And I'm just going to slice it in half, that's important, and then I'm going to just run my knife down the edge to pull that skin off, okay? And if you don't like, like there are a couple of little black marks in here. I, I don't get crazy about that stuff. I mean, they're homemade potatoes, so um, I, it doesn't change the flavor, so just leave it in there. But if you don't like the way it looks, pull it out. Um, again, I'm going to do the set other side. See how fast that is? It's the best tip. I love it. It's so good. Okay. We're just running it around, around the side, down the edge, and voila, voila, voila. We are done. Okay. And so I'm throwing it into a bowl of cold water. And the reason I'm using the cold water is the water is gonna pull the starch out of the potato. You know when they're kind of like sticky and get a weird flavor to them? It's because they, they've been over mixed and the starch has been left in them and they get really glutinous and they have like, it's almost like eating chalk. Um, so this is, a, this is a step you do not wanna skip. So you have a bowl of cold water off to the side, just plop them down in there and then when you get that water boiling, then you throw the potatoes in. Don't put the potatoes in the pot until the water's boiling, okay? Otherwise they get overcooked. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, so you're gonna get your station set up. You're gonna get your potatoes going. Lop off the ends, cut it down the middle, run that knife around the edge to pull the peel off, put it into a bowl of cold water, and then meet me back here. All right, let's get it going. All right, we're back. As you can see, it is nighttime here in Maryland. Um, my day blew up with my kids. I had so much to do. And now I'm back in the kitchen getting my Thanksgiving prep uh, finished up for my mashed potatoes. Um, or as I like to call them, whipped potatoes, because I'm not actually mashing them, I'm whipping them. So we'll get to that in a second. So we're on to the next step. My pot is boiling. I've added two teaspoons of salt because of the massive amount of potatoes that I'm cooking. Remember, I'm doing a 15 pound bag. For you, if you're doing a three pound bag, which is the standard size, or five pound bag, I do a teaspoon of salt, should be fine. If it's less than that, half a teaspoon, um, depending on, on what you're doing. But you definitely need to salt and you need to salt after your water's already started to boil because it will burn the bottom of your pot. And the reason I know that is because I've done that and you gotta really scrub it. So anyways, 
I want to show you how these potatoes look, okay? There we go. If you can look and see, there's like the, see that filminess? That white film in the bottom? Yeah, um, you, that's all the starch that pulled out. And so we want to, we want to make sure that we don't skip this step. It's super important, okay? We've pulled out the starch, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my potatoes, I'm going to dump them. I have to break, oh my gosh, okay, hold on, I got to show you, all right? Go back. See, this is the starch that I'm talking about. This is why we don't want to skip this step, okay? We don't, we don't want that. We don't want to eat that, okay? Um, I love it when I'm proven right. It's one of my favorite things. Okay, so, oh, actually, I need to keep this. What I'm going to do is just rinse this out. Just going to dump it out to the side. I've reduced the heat on the pot so it's not boiling. Otherwise, when I drop these in, I'm gonna I'm gonna burn myself. So um, here we go. All right. And the other thing that to be really that's super important is don't overcrowd your pot. That's one reason why I have this giant pot. Um, I love it. I use it for so many different things. Go out, go out and get yourself a Dutch oven. I mean, it's one of the greatest um, things I've ever, I've ever gotten. So I highly recommend them. So this water's salted, and don't not salt it. I mean, most people home cooks they make the mistake of not salting um, their food enough. So and you got to salt as you go, and that's true. We've learned that from all those cooking shows, right? So, don't overcrowd your pot. Let this come to a boil, okay? If you're cooking along with me, let it come to a boil. You want it to be like, you want to be able to stick or pierce a knife through it. But if it's crumbling apart, then you've let it boil too long. So, I'd say, depending on how crowded your pot is, you got to keep an eye on it. But it's going to be between 15, maybe 20 minutes. This is gonna take me 20 minutes just because of the size of the pot and the amount of potatoes that are in here. Um, it could be 10 if it's like red potatoes, but the key is just to keep checking it, I'd say every five to 10 minutes, just pricking it with a little knife, okay? So we're gonna meet back here and convene after we've boiled our potatoes, and then I'm gonna give you the third step to finish it up. All right, it has been exactly 20 minutes, like clockwork, and the potatoes are done. Okay, so I'd like to actually um, take a little video for you so you can see the doneness because I think that's really important. So here we go. All right, so um, as you can see, see how that one's starting to break apart a little bit? That's as far as you, that's as done as you want them to be. See that one? Yeah, you want them to be, you want to be able to pierce it and you don't want them to be crumbling. See how they're just popping apart? That one's good. See how it still it stays pierced? So they're just to the point where they're exactly done. So that's what you want. That's how done that you want them to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it. I'm going to drain the water out. I have a sink over the sink colander that I love this. This is like a, like a must-have. Um, I'm going to pull the water out of it or dump the water out. And then I'm going to put the potatoes back into this pot. I want them to stay warm while I'm working with them. That's a huge tip, okay? You do not want them to start cooling down. So um, strain your potatoes, and then I'll meet you back here, and we're going to get this done, okay? And they're going to take... Okay, so uh, it's all drained, and um, I am going to move on to the next step. All right, what we have next is butter and milk and this is the thing with butter with the butter and milk you want to heat this up in the microwave before you add it to the potatoes again you don't want to add anything that's cold it'll cause them to seize up so um i'm gonna put in my butter first my mom always laughs at me um i always say uh everybody turn don't look um, but butter is the key, the, the component that I actually think is the most important. I actually use butter and I'm a little bit lighter on the milk or the cream. I do not use cream if I'm using butter, okay? It just seems unnecessary. So 
for this big of a serving, I'm using three sticks of butter. Um, if I'm doing just a small serving, it might be a couple of tablespoons. Um, if it's a five pound bag or a three pound bag, I'm, I'm using at least one stick of butter, okay? And it de don't skimp here. It makes the difference. Listen, we're only doing this once a year, right? It, let yourself have the butter. Um, but then I do 2% milk um, with, uh, instead of cream. I'm not gonna double up on that. Now I am, I also use unsalted butter all the time. I do not, I wanna be able to control the amount of butter in all the dishes that I'm making, okay? So I don't use salted butter. I don't, I don't need it. You don't need it, okay? So I'm gonna now, blend this up, but before I do that, I'm just gonna kinda push this through, break it up. Now, I do this before I add the milk, okay? Or chicken stock, if you want chicken stock instead. Um, and the reason I do that is because it, um, I don't know how much I'm gonna need, and that's all because of the amount of water that the potatoes have absorbed. So, I'm just gonna put this on low, and I'm gonna break it up. Okay, so I'm almost done. Um, I want to show you. I'm going to whip it a little bit more, okay? So I've added in the milk. Um, I've done a cup of milk, and I've whipped that in. And gotten it nice and creamy, and this is when it starts to look really whipped. Um, a lot of air, there's a lot of air in it, which is so beautiful. It makes it light and fluffy instead of really dense. That's one of the reasons why I don't like to use heavy cream because it really does weight it down. Also, I put in about a tablespoon and a half of salt, kosher salt. Um, so that's already mixed in. So if you're doing a five pound bag, start with a teaspoon of salt and then go from there. I would not over salt because you know you're going to be putting gravy and other things on it so or at least having it with other things that are salted but you definitely don't want to under salt um, that's where I think most people go wrong so anyways let's take a look at this so you see how fluffy that is look yeah you hear the air in it right see that that's the consistency that you're looking for okay see how it kind of sticks to my spoon yeah, that's what you're looking for, but it's so light and fluffy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, so let's move on to the next stage. So easy. This is so simple, right? It's just like three steps. So I have my casserole. I'm going to take a warm, I just, you know, room temp, a little towel of butter. I'm taking it and just rubbing it into all the crevices. Now, if you don't know what you're going to cook this in, you're making it ahead of time, just put it in a um, freezer safe Ziploc, gallon Ziploc. Um, just take it out a little bit in advance um, so it can defrost all the way. So I do at least 24 hours before you're going to cook it, maybe, maybe more, um, and defrost it and then put it into whatever casserole dish you want to bake it in. Um, I just know that this is what I'm going to use is what I use every year. So I'm going to load this up and I know I'm going to have some left over and I am going to put that in as a block uh, because that'll be our second day portion and I will, well I think I might have some left over. I should have some left over. I will put that in as a block to store because it'll be easier to store. Look how fluffy this is. This is gorgeous. This came out perfectly and my family's just going to love them. I mean, the best thing about mashed potatoes is that it's one of those dishes that everybody loves. Such a pleaser. The kids love it. The adults love it. Um, it's such a comfort food and I think that's just one of the things that makes it so special. I mean, I just think about my mom. And when I was a kid, my mama, as I, that's what I call her, even though I'm a 47 year old woman, my mama would make mashed potatoes from scratch. I remember watching her, she'd sit me up on the counter 
and she'd use her stand mixer and then she'd pull pull the blades off and she'd give them to my brother and I and we'd call them mashed potato popsicles and that was like a special treat but for me cooking was just about being in the kitchen and it's about love and it's about cooking from the heart and that's one of the reasons why um, I enjoy it so much. One of the reasons why I love Thanksgiving so much and one of the reasons why I love sharing the, these recipes with you guys because it's a big part of my love language and who I am and even though I can't come in your home and cook for you at least I can do it this way. So from my kitchen to yours I hope that you really enjoyed this. Um, if there's anything else that you'd like for me to teach you or break down for you just uh, put it in the comments and I can't wait till next time. All right. Bye y'all. Happy Thanksgiving.